large plume of smoke in the area behind crematorium 5. To increase the extermination potential of Birkenau, some of the bodies from the gas chambers were burnt in open pits. Corpses were stacked up at the back of the crematoria. We saw people lined up being actually shot and heard the shots and saw people being thrown into the pits and burned alive, some people. I think this is going to be ultimately an unsatisfying talk in the sense that I can't tell you climate geoengineering is a good idea or a bad idea. In fact, it's kind of crazy to try and make that determination. But what I want to do is to lay out some of the ways that we need to... Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the... You told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the New World Order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Could you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You may want to touch base with me. Are we out there working? When you look up at the sun and you see a white haze, that is aluminum floating in the air right now, and it's coming from the aircraft. There's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese, and uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found, but aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form, and we're finding high rates of free aluminum uh, in the soil, which is not natural. The metal compounds that are being used are environmentally dangerous. We need to be monitoring them. We need to be testing them. Okay, these previous guys, I've watched exactly what they do, and yes, they are correct. I've seen exactly the same stuff, so ditto marks on those. You want some figures? Okay, latest water test, tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero, then it was 100s in the 2000s, and then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? We have clouds in the sky we've never seen before. Almost every day I'm seeing clouds I've never seen before. And NASA has been even named a few of these new clouds. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting, but NASA is a corporation. I want you to know that. Uh, NASA has also uh, conducted a research program in what they call metallized fuels. We're actually putting aluminum oxide right in the fuel because it has two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So during the combustion process, it releases all that oxygen and dramatically increases efficiency, but it leaves the aluminum in the air. We got things coming from sky down, and it's a huge, huge problem. Because as it comes down, what happens is a couple of things. Is that it actually is in our air, we breathe it. And as we breathe it, it's actually gonna go up through our nostrils, into our brain, easiest access to our brain frontal lobe. The contaminants that are in, that have been identified, which already been mentioned, are aluminum. Aluminum is the number one neural uh, free radical generator to the brain to cause early apoptosis, which is early death of brain, and it begins to set off the scar tissue, which we call the amygdalin, which is a pot, which is part of the um, chemical matrix related to Alzheimer's. I'm a neurologist practicing in Reading for 17 years, and in the past five years, I have seen the number of patients with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases tremendously increased, almost quadruple. Uh, I became interested in chemtrails about eight years ago when I was in Hawaii, and the Hawaiians are really being very vocal about it. 
I concur about the increase in number of Alzheimer's. They have been able to take the aluminum and micronize it, which means it'll stay up longer. But it also means, and I don't know if any of you have noticed a metallic taste in your mouth when they're spraying, but you inhale that, it goes up through your cribriform plate and into your, through your sinuses and into the brain. As you heard, to spray nanoparticles, very small particles, these nanoparticles, they basically trigger a programmed cell death in the brain. And that is the ultimate pass we see in Alzheimer's. That's problem number one, because when we look at the Alzheimer issue, we say those are the old. The real problem is, and the real scare I have, is as I am a father of two, I am a grandfather of three, so the drama is, is our children. ADD started in the 70s. Autism was not on the radar. There was no documents, there was no information. It was one in 100,000 children. Today, what we have is one in 48 boys. I was part of the early group that was looking for aluminum in ADD and ADHD. And all of those children that started to develop those phenomena at high levels of aluminum. When we figured out... This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. But after receiving thousands of records and declassified reports from the Army, it's confirmed that during the Cold War, the United States military conducted secret tests on unsuspecting people in the city of St. Louis. Lisa Martino Taylor's life work has been to uncover details of the Army's ultra-secret military experiments carried out in St. Louis and other cities during the 1950s and 60s. This study was secretive for a reason. Um, they didn't have um, volunteers stepping up and saying, yeah, I'll breathe zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles. These Army archive pictures show how the tests were done in Corpus Christi, Texas in the 1960s. In Texas, planes were used to drop the chemical, but in St. Louis, the Army placed chemical sprayers on buildings and station wagons. City officials were kept in the dark about the tests. The Cold War cover story was that the Army was testing smoke screens to protect cities from a Russian attack. Clearly, they went to great lengths to deceive people. By making hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, she uncovered once classified documents that confirmed the spraying of zinc cadmium sulfide. The greatest concentration of this compound was sprayed near the pruitt Igo housing complex just south of downtown St. Louis. It was home to 10,000 low-income people, and an estimated 70% were under the age of 12. Martino Taylor claims they all unknowingly inhaled this compound morning, noon, and night so the government could measure its effects on their lungs. So this is in violation of all medical ethics, all international codes, and the military's own policy at that time. And Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. This time, it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time, it was only a drill, and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. A wild accusation from Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He says Western countries are causing drought in certain parts of the world, including Iran. He says they're using high-tech equipment to drain raindrops from clouds. He basically says European countries are stealing rain from Iran for their own use. They match the climate engineering patents exactly. They're falling on us. More dry lightning. When you aerosolize the atmosphere with these conductive metal particulates, you get more dry lightning. The atmosphere is more electrically conductive. It's drier because these particulates are desiccants. They absorb moisture. And these metallic particulates are an incendiary dust. It coats the forest foliage and makes it more flammable. All these are facts, all contributing to the fires that are burning down around the globe. Wherever you see the jet chemtrails go over, you're going to get aluminum, barium, strontium coming down on you. Why would we not believe it's happening when what we see in the sky matches exactly the express goal of numerous geoengineering patents, about 160 or more? Why would we not believe this is happening when every element showing up in the rain tests are the primary elements named in those geoengineering patents? Why would we not believe this is happening when we have escalating levels 
in very sh short time frames, as much as short as five years, we see rain levels of aluminum, for example, escalating as much as 50,000%. California air quality studies do not show these metals migrating from China. And it's of recent origin.